Uh, what's cracking YouTube? Uh, today I'm going to show you how to commit credit card fraud, which is actually a lot easier than you might think uh, with a few simple tools. Uh, this should be a relatively easy process. So, for example here, we have you. You want to commit credit card fraud. To do this, you first are going to need a computer. Uh, what kind of computer it is does not matter. What kind of operating system it is does not matter either. And you're going to want to install something called Tor. And Tor is a browser that allows you to access the deep or the dark web. And on the deep or the dark web, you're going to want to do a little bit of research and figure out where you can buy credit card information. And when you have found a place where you can buy this credit card information, when you find one that suits you, you're going to want to use something called Bitcoin. And Bitcoin, if you don't know, is a cryptocurrency. And it is a completely untraceable uh, currency that keeps all your transactions anonymous. Now, you have purchased someone else's credit card information on the dark web. Now you're going to need this. This is called an embosser or an emboser, whatever you want to call it. And what this will allow you to do is when you take your fake credit card here, um, you can rewrite the information to suit the one you have just purchased. So you're going to place it into the embosser, embosser, whatever, and punch in the new numbers to match the ones you have purchased, and then set that aside for the for a few seconds, and then you're going to want to pull this out. This is called a skimmer, or a credit card scanner, some kind of scanner for credit cards, gift cards, whatever. And you're going to want to plug that into your computer, swipe this credit card over that, and automatically the information you have just purchased will automatically write onto your credit card. So now, you have a credit card here that has your name and someone else's information. Very, very, very cool. Next, you're going to want to pick a location. Um, preferably, you're going to want to go to maybe, I would say, a Walmart, because there is quite a few of them in the United States, and since there is so many of them, you can hit quite a few if you want to make a lot of money. So, but I mean, you know, the location is up to you, really. Uh, it depends on where you live, whatever. So, you're going to want to look around, and you're going to want to find expensive items, because you want to turn a pretty nice profit here. So, preferably, electronics, and I mean, kind of any electronics, really, does not matter. It's up to you. For this example here, I have five PlayStation 4s uh, that uh, we will be theoretically purchasing here. So you're going to want to throw those on there. Uh, the person at the counter is going to scan them and place them in the bagging area. Now, um, this part of the process is pretty weird uh, because the person at the counter is going to find it either odd that you're buying five PlayStations or not odd at all in the slightest and just leave you on your way. But I would say more or less, or really more of the time, they're going to start asking, or they're going to ask you like a few questions like, because it seems odd to buy five PlayStation 4s or whatever. So they're going to start asking you like, why are you buying five PlayStation 4s? Right? So um, you're going to want to come up with a very elaborate kind of story to make it seem reasonable that you're buying five PlayStation 4s. So let's say, oh yeah, uh, my brother's cousin's sister's aunt's nephew's dog wants a PlayStation and so does my other four cousins or something and they all have the same birthday. I don't know. It doesn't matter. This part is completely up to you. Um, but uh, I would say it is the hardest part because um, it is kind of on your own you really do have to come up with a good story here or you could land yourself in a lot of trouble. And as long as your story is good enough, the person at the counter is probably going to be like, oh, I understand, or oh, okay, that makes sense, and then uh, whatever. So then, take your new fake credit card, give it to the person at the counter, they will swipe it, and make sure you use credit, and once that's all said and done, if you followed every step properly, the transactions should approve. Now, um, when the transaction approves, you have basically just committed credit card fraud. 
and you do not want to actually keep this credit card here because this is now a fraudulent card so dispose of it however you wish and then um, whatever this is out of the question now you have five playstations and what you're going to want to do with these is basically just uh, resell them on eBay or offer me or any kind of place where you can sell items and make sure you price them reasonably and once they are all sold uh, at that point you have made probably a good sum of money there and you have successfully committed credit card fraud and really that's all there is to it it's really not that hard and um, yeah so uh, make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one